Uh, Granny, Abner, I believe that's our ring. I don't get Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John him down store. This is Lum and Abner. <laughs> Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Squire Skimp took it upon himself to send a copy of the coat of arms in the baby's locket to a genealogical research bureau in an effort to learn something about the baby's family. Lum and Abner were a little upset about this because they fear that now the squire will discover that the baby is the heir to a kingdom. However, they are pretty anxious to hear any information that the squire is able to get from the research bureau. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot them down store and library. Lum is telephoning. Listen. It ain't done yet, huh? Uh, well, how soon will it be ready, Caleb? Uh, well, I reckon that'll be all right. Abner, stop Wilson and while I'm on the phone. Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, what was that, Caleb? It's a little. Oh, yeah. Well, let me know when it's done. I'll come over and try it on. Yeah. All right, Caleb. Goodbye. What are you going over to Caleb's and try on, Mom? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Well, what is it? Oh, just something Caleb's making for me. Something I'll need when we start running the baby's kingdom for him. Oh, <laughs> something Caleb's making for you? Yeah. Well, all he makes over at that blacksmith shop is horseshoes. You ain't aiming on wearing them, are you? Oh, for goodness sake. Is that what they're wearing, Castle's horseshoes? Of course not. Well, I'm glad they don't. I know I don't want nobody nailing nothing like that on the bottom of my feet. Well, you can get the silliest ideas of every one human I ever knowed in my life. Well, what do you have him, Caleb, make you some horseshoes for? He ain't making me no horseshoes. He's making me a sword. A sword? Yes, sir. I figure I ought to be wearing one of them around the castle. I'd like to have one with gold handle, but that costs too much. Well, here, I better be getting me one of them, too, Orton. No, just the kings and the assistant kings wears them. You're just a duke. Or will be. Yeah. Besides, Caleb ain't got enough stuff to make another out of, no way. Yeah, huh? I had to take that old pickaxe we had around the store here over there so's he'd have enough to make my sword out of. Well, maybe I can find another pickaxe. No, now, don't bother. If you need a sword any time, I'll let you loan you out on your mind. Well, I believe I ought to have one of my own, Lum. I, I know I saw pictures of Duke's toting swords. No, them was kings and knights. They was killing dragoons with them. Well, I believe I'll call up Grandpappy Spirit and see if he's got old pickaxe. No, around. now, don't call. Go calling Grandpappy. Right, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ain't that him coming across? No, 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 no. Squire Skimp. Squire. Yeah, right there. And he must have got that report from Chicago. Report. Yeah, the one from that outfit that looks up insignias and coats of arms and family histories and such as that. Oh, oh. Genealogy or whatever you call it. Yeah, that's the one he read in for, ain't it? Yeah, I'm sort of anxious to hear this so we can find out all about the baby and what kingdom he's from. And yeah, me too, me too. But I hate for Squire to learn that he's an orphan king. Well, I do too. That Squire will want to get himself in on this kingdom some way. I know him. Well, all we can do is just face it now. Yeah. Don't say nothing about us aiming on going to whatever country it is and helping the baby get the king job back again. Oh, no, no, I won't say a word. Reckon Squire's got an old pickaxe. Abner, forget that now. Huh? Find out here he comes. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen. Yeah, howdy, Squire. Come on back, Squire. Did you hear from that family history outfit in Chicago? Yes, yes, I did, Lum. That's what it came over for. The report came in this morning. And I must say it contains some very interesting information. Very interesting indeed. Well, I figured it would. Well, I'll admit I was quite amazed, Rum, yes. And I'll tell you, men, if the cards are played properly, I'd say that your young George, your infant boy, has quite a future ahead of him, yes, indeed. Yeah, we know that. Well, exactly what does the report say, Squire? Yeah, let's get down to brass nails here. What was it? Yes, I know you're anxious to hear all the details. Let's see now, where did I put that letter? I know I had it with me here. Yes, 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 here we are, here we are. The Salisbury Genealogical Institute and Research Bureau, yes. It's got an impressive name, I'll say that for it. Oh, yes. Now, at long... Uh, some of this is rather long and involved, so I'll just uh, summarize some parts of it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Do that to it, whatever you said. Well, uh, first of all, they discovered that the coat of arms, 
I sent them a copy of that one you found in the baby's locket. You yeah, know. you told us about that. Well, they discovered that it belongs to an old, well-established family by the name of Worthington. Worthington? Yes. The uh, family dates back to the American Revolution. And, for the most part, the various generations of this family uh, lived in the New England states, principally in Massachusetts. Massachusetts? Yes. Well, that ain't no foreign country. Why, no, no, of course not, Lum. One of the 13 original states, as a matter of fact. Well, how could the baby be a king? Abner, hey, Chef. Well, what's that, Abner? Hey, he weren't saying nothing, Squire. No. Oh. Go on. What else does the report say? Well, it uh, goes on to list various members of the Worthington family tree, uh, bringing it down to the present day, where we find that the original Worthington strain has practically died out. Died out, huh? Yes. It uh, seems that the last members possessing the family name had uh, two daughters... But no sons. Uh, little is known about one of the two daughters, but uh, the other one moved out west, apparently to regain her health. Squire, are you sure they sent you the right report? Oh, yes, yes, indeed, Lum, yes. Uh, let me finish this now. Uh, the uh, daughter who went out west uh, settled in the Black Hills region of South Dakota, and there she married a man by the name of, uh, let's see here, uh, L.W. Katerick. Kateri. Yes. Well, I, I might not sure they've made a mistake there, Summer Squire. Oh, no, no, they haven't, Lum. No, they haven't. Now, wait till you hear the rest of this. Uh, Mr. Kateri was a gold prospector who had the very good fortune of making a strike and later became the owner of a very lucrative gold mine. Gold mine? Yes. My goodness. This is getting more interesting. <laughs> Go on, Squire. Let's hear the rest of it. Uh, well, it seems that uh, Mr. Castare died, uh, leaving the mine to his widow, naturally. Oh, yeah, natural. Well, did she have any youngs? Well, uh, no. Not by Mr. Castare alone. However, the report states that there was a secret marriage. Uh, Mrs. Castare married a ne'er-do-well writer who disappeared a short time after. Now, this marriage was never made public, but it has since been confirmed by court records. Well, what's his name? Now, yeah, let's see now. It's right down there somewhere. Uh, yes, here it is right here. Uh, Guthrie. Norwood Guthrie. And the last that anyone heard of him while he was in uh, Kansas City. Kansas City? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Granny, you don't reckon he was the one that... Yeah, what's that, Lon? No, it couldn't have been. Uh, Hold on, Squire. No, oh, well, let's see now. Where were we? Oh, yes, yes, it is. Uh, it was rumored that there was a child by this marriage. However, this has not been confirmed. It ain't. Uh, no. Does it say about how old a youngin would be if there was such a one? No, no, it doesn't, Mom. However, it uh, couldn't be very old since the Guthrie marriage took place just a little over two years ago. Oh, I do not. I wonder. <laughs> I know just what you're thinking, Lum. But there's one hitch. Mrs. Katerrick herself died about a month and a half ago. And evidently there's some trouble over the uh, ownership of the mine. It seems that uh, the sister has appeared on the scene and put in a claim for it. She has? Yes. I grant you, then that feller I talked to on the long-distance phone was right. Was right? He told me a mean sister of the baby's mama was trying to get something away from the baby. He never said what. Well, now, just a minute here, Lum. Uh, what fellow is this? The one in Kansas City that got shot while he was talking to me on the phone. Oh. And I know he was, too. He was that Guthrie feller. That's just about who he was. Just about, Lum. I recollect now he said he couldn't tell me who he was because it was some kind of a secret. Yeah, yeah. And he said the baby's mama was dead, and he was trying to help the baby get something back that belonged to him. Well, that settled it then, Lum. That settled it without a doubt. This baby that you have is Miss Guthrie's child. And the rightful heir to the gold mine. Why, of course it oh, is. Oh, yes, yes. How else would he have that insignia in his locket? My dog is her gold mine. Yes, sir. And we're leaving <laughs> right tomorrow to get it back for him, too. Well, now, hold on now, Lum. Just a minute now. You can't do that. See, uh, this aunt evidently has established a fairly strong claim for the mine. And there's also another matter, uh, the matter of proving that the baby is actually Mrs. Katerra's child. And is that right, ain't it? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. I believe it's going to take the help of some very good lawyers to prove that too long. Well, huh? Well, we don't know no lawyers to get. 
Well, uh, why don't you let me help you with this? I'm acquainted with several very excellent and highly successful attorneys. And with my connection and influence, I'm sure I can get them to handle the case for you. Would you do that for us, Your Squire? Boy, yes, yes. I'll be more than happy to oblige you. Uh, Granny's, it's a deal, then. How soon can you get hold of them? Why, well, well, I'll go right home. I'll a special deliver letter right this minute. Well, good. Send it out <laughs> right away. Yes, I'll do that. Well, I better be running along, then, and uh, I'll let you know the minute I get an answer back. Yeah, do that, Squire. So long. Yeah, so long, gentlemen. Granny's having her a gold mine. <laughs> That's even better than a kingdom, I believe. Why, kingdoms sure. Kingdoms don't last long these days. Ain't much money in them. Oh, no, that gold mine. Er, wait a minute, I believe that's all ring, Mom. I'll get it, I'll yeah, get go it. go ahead. Hello, John, I'm down store library. Abner Peabody done the talking. Huh? Oh, hello, Caleb. What's that? Oh, just a minute. Uh, Lom. Caleb says he's got that pickaxe made into a sword, and he wants to know if you're coming over to look at it. Uh, tell him no. Huh? Tell him to change the sword back to a pickaxe. Now, Granny, is that I believe that's our ring. I know this long, I believe you're right. Now, see. Hello, John, I'm down, store. This is Lumen Abner. Now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the report Squire Skimp received from a genealogical research bureau followed the general pattern of meager information the old fellows had received from the unknown man in Kansas City. However, it revealed that the foundling baby is the rightful heir, not to a kingdom, as Lum had imagined, but to a gold mine somewhere in the Black Hills of South Dakota. As we look in our little community today, we find Lum in the library section of their Jotham Down store. Abner is just entering. Listen. Yeah, morning, Abner. Yeah, morning, Lum. Yeah, what are you doing sitting there seeing arrested? Oh, just reading some books. Books? Yeah, books about gold mining and all such as that. Oh, <laughs> I know it's long. You ought to have saw little Charlie this morning. Elizabeth just got hopping mad at him. She did, huh? Oh, <laughs> you know what he done? No. Whilst Elizabeth was busy hanging up some clothes, while he crawled around the side of the house there and dug up some of her favorite flowers, done it with a spoon she gave him to play with. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> oh, she was mad at him. <laughs> he ought to be reading some of these books, too, Abner. Huh? There's a lot of stuff in here we're going to have to know going to have to know. Yeah, about mining. Just listen to this, for instance. The process of removing gold particles from sand or gravel is called placer mining. Uh Uh-huh. This is a simple form of washing out the metal in sluices. Washing out? Is that what they do to gold? Wash it? That's what it says here. Well, uh, is gold dirty? Well, the natural has been sitting around in the sand and gets dirt all over it. Oh, oh Anything yeah. can get dirty that way. Oh, sure, sure, that's right. Well, uh, Lom, when we uh, go to wherever the baby's mind's at then, well, maybe we ought to take Elizabeth along with us. She's awful good at washing out things. Yeah, that's a good idea. She orange good, too, but I don't reckon you'd have to orange Oh, of course not. No. Uh, me and you don't want to waste our time doing woman's work, no way. Oh, of course not. Well, I'll just tell her to bring her scrub board along with her. Yeah, let me read you some more out of this. Yeah, sure. Extracting gold from rock formations is more complicated. Its operation being carried on in a system of shafts, tunnels, and drifts. Well, they must have a lot of snow there, then, all them drifts. As the pure metal is associated with silica or quartz, the extraction of gold loads or veins from rock is termed quartz mining. Quartz mining? Yeah. What does that mean? I reckon it means they take the gold out of the mine by the quart. Oh, sure. What's the matter with me? <laughs> Stigners. <laughs> well, reckon how many quarts a day we'll take out? Mom? Oh, I don't know. 35, 40, somewhere around there. We will? Yeah, a quart of gold ought to be worth at least $10. $10? Well, that makes, let's see, uh, uh, 
ten dollars for it. Four hundred dollars right the first day. Oh, my goodness. Four hundred dollars in one day? Yes, sir. And after we get things running right, we'll more than likely start taking it out by the gallon instead of quartz. I don't know. My doggies. A gallon of gold. <laughs> That's what I'd love to get me, a whole gallon of gold. Gernies, I'm getting anxious to get up there to them Black Hills and start working that night. Oh, me too, me too. The squire would hurry up and get that lawyer first and get everything settled. Well, why do we have to wait for a lawyer long? Let's just go on up there and take it over right now. Well, we can't do that. Can't, huh? Well, there's a lot of legal stuff that has to be straightened out first. Why? Well, according to that genealogy report that Squire got, that mean aunt of the baby claims the mine belongs to her. Huh? She claims she's the only living relate of Mrs. Carteret. Uh, Miss who? Carteret. The woman that owned the mine before she died. The oh. baby's mama. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, here, though, what about the baby, Mom? He's a living relay to her. I uh, know, but our lawyer has to, uh, has to prove that first some way. Prove it? Well, lo me, Mom, he's living. Anybody could see that just the way he's digging up them flowers this morning. He's plumb alive. Well, that ain't what I mean. You see, he was the son of Mrs. Carteret's second marriage. The secret marriage to Mr. Guthrie. Oh. And they ain't found no court records proving the baby was born. Well, he must have been born, Mom. Well, it's still got to be proved by a lawyer, though. Well, let's call up Squire and see if he's got a hearing back from that lawyer yet. Well, he couldn't have gotten a hearing yet. He just wrote the letter yesterday. Oh, yeah, that's right. Doggies, I wish he'd hurry up. <laughs> I want to get me a gallon of gold. Doggies, won't Elizabeth be surprised when she sees me come toting that thing home? <laughs> She'll more likely think it's a gallon of molasses or something. I won't tell her no different. I'll just hand it to her. <laughs> and she'll say, oh, my goodness, Abner, what heavy molasses these is. <laughs> I won't say a word, though. And she'll take the chipper off and look inside. And she'll say, Abner, these things is frizz. They're solid. Look there. See how they rattle in the bucket? But I won't say a word. For goodness I won't... sakes, I hash up that prittle prattle. Huh? I thought he'd think you was catch. I know, because I know something else I'm going to do. I'm going to bring little Pearl home a pint of gold. See, when Elizabeth bakes pies, she always bakes a little pie for Pearl. That pint of gold will just tickle her to death. Her well, own. just a minute, Abner. You better not get yourself all steamed up with such big ideas, because that gold don't belong to me and you. Huh? Every cent that comes out of that mine belongs to the baby. Huh? He's the one that's inheriting it, not us. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? And we're going to see that nobody takes none of it away from him, neither. He's going to have all that money put away in some safe place. Little miser. What'd you say? Uh, oh, oh, nothing, nothing. Well, look, Lom, if we go up there and work the mine, why, we'll have to close a jot of down store, so what are we going to live on? Oh, well, we'll get a little salary for running the mine, naturally. Well, huh, about a gallon a week. Something like that. Doggies, we ought to get more than that, Lom. I believe that little rascal stingy, you know what? Why, he ain't no such a thing. Well, he General. can afford to pay us more than that. I know he can. All them gallons he gets that every day. That man... phone. That was our ring, I hope. Yeah, just the same. I still think he ought to pay us a lot more than that. I'll say, hello, jot him down store and library. Having a fee body doing a talking. Oh, yeah, Elizabeth. Bring home what? Flower seed. Huh? He dug up some more of them, huh? Well, keep him in the house or something, then. Well, you figure out what to do. I'm busy. Yeah, I'll bring the seed. All right, honey. Goodbye. <laughs> the baby pulled up some more of her flowers, huh? Yeah, yeah. You know, i just been thinking, Mom. I don't believe it's a good thing for little Charlie to have all that money. He won't know what to do with it. Well, don't worry. I know exactly what he's going to do with it. I've already studied it up. You have, huh? He's going to invest it in United States government war bonds. War bonds? Yes, sir. There's the safest one to invest a fella can make. And it pays good interest, too. Yeah, it's a good interest. Every week he's going to buy more bonds, regular. That's the only way to save money. Do it regular, huh? Yes, sir. And on top of that, it'll help win the war. Yeah. Sure. Little Lom will be right in there fighting them axes, snakes, and the weeds just like everybody else. Fighting them? That little baby? Yeah. Only he'll be fighting them with dollars instead of guns, of course. Oh. If you can't get into the front line yourself, the next, next best thing is to buy bonds and stamps. Yeah, that's a good that's idea. That's the way every patriotic citizen can help beat the axes. Yeah, that's right, Lom, yeah. 
Of course, there's one thing about it, old Lum. How's little Charlie going to crawl over to the post office and tell him that he wants 50 gallon worth of bonds? He can't talk. I know that. I'm going to do it for him. You are? I'll guard Dean his money for him. Oh, uh, well, is that legal? Of course it is. He's a miner, ain't he? A miner? Yeah. Well, now, wait now, Lum. You're going too far with that baby. It's all right for him to own a mine, but now he's too young to actually be a miner and dig out the gold himself. I don't mean that kind of a miner. Has he got another mine of some kind? Oh, for goodness sakes. Uh, what's his other than a coal mine? No. A uh, brass mine? He ain't got no mines at the gold mine. When uh-huh. I said he was a miner, I mean he was young. A young miner? Uh, Grannies. Well, he's more than just a young miner. He's a baby miner. Long. Abner, what I mean is that he's under 21 year old. <laughs> Anybody can tell that. He's a long ways under 21. Facts is, he ain't but old around a year old, I reckon. I know how old he is. Mom, you don't realize he's just a little baby. I know he's a baby, and that's exact- exactly what I've been trying to explain to you. A baby is a miner. M-I-N-O-R, miner. Well, you don't need to spell it out for me, Lum. I can spell. But I still don't believe it. That's the silliest one I ever heard in my whole... Now, wait a minute. Oh, oh! I believe I see what you mean now. Well, it's about time. <laughs> Why, sure. Why didn't I think of that myself? You, you sure now that's what he is? Of course I'm sure. He, he's sort of a genus, huh? Comes by it natural. Well, sure, it's natural for him. You don't have to be... I know, that's all I want to know. Let me get to that telephone. Well, just a minute here. What are you aiming on doing? Okay, this is my lucky day, I believe, love. <laughs> Why, sure, that makes everything different. Uh, I'm just glad you found out about this, Lum, or I might never... Uh, hello? Elizabeth? Yeah, this is your man, Abner. Yeah, listen, Elizabeth, you take little Charlie out and put him back in that flower bed. I know we will, but now you just let him do it. He knows what he's doing. Well, he ain't just digging up flowers. That's what I thought, too, but he's starting a new gold mine. Why, sure he is. Lom says that baby's a natural boy. <laughs> Uh, Granny, Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know his Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John him down store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner are determined to get back the gold mine which rightfully belongs to their foundling baby and which has apparently fallen into the hands of an aunt of the baby. Squire Skimp has promised to get a lawyer to handle the case for them. And while the old fellows are waiting to hear from Squire on this matter, they're going ahead with plans for running the gold mine for the baby until he's old enough to handle it himself. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot them down store and library. Listen. That's our ring. I'll get it, Abner. I'm right here. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Hello, jot them down store and library. L. Edwards, gold mine president talking. President? Yes, Mom. Hmm. All right, box of soda cracker. That's a new one. Bucket of lard. Three bars of soap. How'd he get to be president? Anything else now, Miss Borden? All right, much obliged to you. Yes, Mom, this afternoon. All right. Goodbye. Uh, Mom? Oh, <laughs> goodbye. Mom, how did you get to be president of the gold mine? Uh, just a minute here, Abner. Huh? I was aiming on explaining it to you later on, but I may as well tell you. See, I figure somebody's got to be president till a baby gets old enough to take it over himself. Yeah, but how come you figured you was the one to do it? Well, after running through a long list of names, I come to the conclusion that I was about the only one feller we knowed that was smart enough to handle the job and could be trusted at the same time. Well, how about me? I know I can trust me. Yeah, but it takes more of an executive type of a feller, though, Abner. 
Well, I'm a zefty type, I believe, Long. No, you ain't. You can't even say the word good. Huh? Besides, I've already pinted myself, so that's that. Well, here, you can't go pinting yourself president of something you don't even own. That mine belongs to the baby. Well, I'm his guardian, ain't I? Not official, you ain't. Well, all right, then. What do you want to do? Vote on it? Yes, sir. That's what I want to do. Vote. Give myself a chance. Uh, wait a minute, though. It'll just keep coming out of tie like it always does when me and you vote on something, Lom. Well, it won't this time, because there'll be three of us voting. Three? We'll get the baby in on this. The baby? Oh, hey, sure. As long as he owns a mine, he ought to have a vote, ordinary. he? Well, law me, a baby can't vote, Lom. He can't write down who he wants for president. Well, of course he can't, but in cases like this, the guardian always does the voting prime. And as long as I'm the baby's guardian. Oh, idea. no, I ain't going to let you do that and get two votes to my one. I dog is we'll just study up some other way to vote, Barney. Don't think there is any other way. Well, we might take a stand and vote. Little Charlie can stand by himself. Stand by himself? Why, sure. He sort of hangs on when he can stand up. Yeah, but he wouldn't know when to stand and when to sit. Yeah, well, I don't know no other way, then. Except by secret ballot. No. I don't think he knows no secrets. No, that wouldn't be fair, because he's been living over at your place, and natural, he's more used to you now. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to do with them secret ballots. I don't reckon he knows no secrets or what they do in that secret ballot. Of course, there's one way we might do it, and that's get a disinterested party to vote for him. Huh? A disinterested party. That's a feller that ain't for her or again either side. So they get him to do the voting for somebody that can't do his own voting. These ways, that's what I think it is. Well, is that legal? Of course it's legal. Lots of big business deals is handled that way. Yeah, huh? Why, well, sure. Well, whereabouts do you find these disinterested fellas at? Look, come in here. Huh? Well, oh, wonderful world. Oh, howdy, Cedric. Come on back. Yeah, howdy, Cedric. What can we do for you? Er, wait a minute. Cedric, are you disinterested? Mom. Are you disinterested? Oh, yes, Mom, I believe I am. Been sort of disinterested ever since Claire Bell started going with Gomer Bates. Is she still going with him? Yes, Mom, but I don't care. I'm a woman hater now, I think. Well, well how about it, Lom? Will Cedric do? Yeah, yeah, I reckon so. Uh, Cedric, old boy, do you want to help us elect a president for the gold mine? Well, how old do I have to be? Well, it don't matter, Cedric. You just have to be disinterested, that's all. Uh, how about using these grocery slips here to vote on, Lom? Yeah, that's a good idea. Pull them up when we get through writing on them, though. Yeah, yeah. So others can't see how you're voting. Oh. Go ahead and take one, Cedric. You got a pencil? Yes, Mom, I've got a stub here. Well, you sure now it's legal for Cedric to vote for somebody else this way, Long? Why, well, sure. Hurry up and write down your vote, Abner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cedric, you know who's an executive type around here, don't you? Yes, Mom. Yeah, there's mine. It's all done. You done yet, Cedric? Just about. I ain't sure how to spell this, though. Huh? Well, you know how to spell, or, I mean, you know how to spell. Yeah, don't forget to fold it up now, Cedric. No more. There. Is that fold it all right, Mr. Abner? Oh, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> all right, now, hurry up, count them. That dog is, I'm jumping nervous at a rabbit's nose. <laughs> well, here we go. <clears throat> we'll soon find out about yeah. <laughs> it. Uh, one vote for L. Edwards. Well, good for me. One vote for Abner Peabody. You ought to learn to write better, Abner. Well, I was in a hurry. Uh, read the other, and this will decide it right here. And one vote for disinterested. Huh? For goodness sake, Cedric, you wasn't supposed to write that down. Now i got to vote all over again. Well, that's what I thought you told me I would. Well, you are, Cedric, but you're supposed to actually vote for somebody. You, you're taking little Charlie's place. You're voting for him. Oh, for him. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now. <laughs> I reckon I got mixed up there. Yeah. Body would think I was ignorant, wouldn't it? Well, he might. Here, everybody take another slip now, and we'll do this over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom, yeah. I think I can get it right this time, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Abner P. Body. There, I wrote it better on this one, Mom. Well, don't tell everybody who you're voting for. Oh, oh, I forgot a secret. Yeah, you done yet, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Gotta fold it up, so. Well, hurry up, fold it, give it to Long. And dog, that I'm getting anxious to see how this comes out. <laughs> well, you know, in just a second. Yeah. Uh, one vote for L. Edwards. <laughs> one vote for Edner Peabody. And one vote for. Well, go on. For Mr. Charlie. Charlie? Well, you can't vote for him, Cedric. He's too young to be president of a gold mine. That's why we're having this election. Well, you told me I was supposed to vote for him. Yeah, but we never meant it that way, Cedric. No. 
You're just doing the baby's voting for him because he's too little to do it for himself. So? You got to vote for, well, for somebody like me, for instance. Yeah, or like me, Cedric. Here. Maybe I better give you some instructions, Cedric, so you'll know exactly what to do. Lean your head over here a minute. This one. Mom, what are you whispering to him now? What are you telling him? Mom? Just the instructions, all. Got that straight now, Cedric? Yes, Mom, I'll be your head. All right, then everybody take another slip of paper. Oh, oh, hey, wait a minute, gentlemen, gentlemen. Uh, hello, Squire. Come on back. Uh, did you get well, a hearing on, from that... I'll write your vote now on the paper there. Squire? Uh, what's that, Lum? Did you get a hearing from that outfit, uh, them lawyers? Uh, yes, yes, I did, Lum. A letter came this morning. I believe I had some good news for you men, too. Well, good. Did he say Ain't that he take... Ain't you going to vote, Lum? Don't bother him, Mr. Abner. I, I know what he wants us to do. He do? Yeah. Come on over in the corner and I'll explain it to you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, go someplace and stop interrupting here. Did the uh, lawyer say he'd take the case, Squire? Well, yes, he did, Lum. Uh, however, there's uh, one thing. Uh, B.W. wrote me that, uh, oh, by the way, his name is uh, Blindwell uh, W. Blair. But we always called him B.W. back in law school. Hey, for short. Huh? Yes, uh, B.W. Br- uh, wrote me that uh, he looked into this case briefly, and uh, he discovered that it'll be an uphill battle on um. Uphill battle? Yes, that's what he said. We'll have to fight out with him. Well, it seems that this sister has already established quite a strong claim for the mine. And I'm afraid you'll have a tough fight on your hands, Lum. Well, I don't care how tough it is. We'll fight it out anyway. And we'll win, too. Well, that's the spirit. That baby's going to get his mind back. I'm bound and determined he is. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Lum. Uh, however, in view of this unfavorable aspect of the case, uh, B.W. says that uh, he'll have to devote most of his time to it, of course, and... Uh, well, therefore, Lum, he would like a small retainer fee in advance of, uh, oh, about $500. $500? Yes, that's what he said. Oh, Granny, he and Abner ain't got that much right now. And it'll take us a little while to raise it. Mm, well, that's too bad, Lum. I- I'll tell you what I'll do. Lum, I'm willing to put up the money and, well, you can pay me later. Oh, no, no, we couldn't ask you to do nothing like oh, that, Squire. Oh, cut, 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 cut. Be glad to do it, Lum. I've come off fairly well in a couple of real estate deals recently, and I can easily handle <laughs> it. How about it, Lum? Well, I would like for that lawyer to get started right away, but I... Well, sure it's a deal, then, Lum. Just consider the deal. The matter's closed. I'll go back to the place and uh, write B.W. and tell him to get right on the case, get things started. Well, at least let me sign a note or a I.O.U. or something. <laughs> Why, that's ridiculous, Lum. We're old friends. I know I can trust you, Lum. And I'll report to you just as soon as I hear something further from B.W. Yeah, yeah, I wish you would. And much obliged, Squire. You don't know how much we appreciate that. Oh, tut, 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 tut. You know me, Lom. Always glad to help an old friend. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you men soon. Uh, so long. Yeah, so long, Squire. Granny, that Squire's all right after all, ain't he, Abner? Abner. Abner, where are you? Over here with Cedric. Oh, did you just hear what Squire's going to do for us? Uh-huh. You know, I'm on a good mind to pint him something when we get the mine back. Maybe vice president or something. I don't know. Well, you can't go around pinting folks wrong. The president does that. Well, natural. And you ain't president because you just now lost the election. What election? Huh? You can't hold no legal election without me. Yes, we can. You told us we could. Or you told Cedric. Well, I never done no such a thing. You did done it. First, you told Cedric to vote for the baby, didn't you? Yeah, of course I did. And then you whispered to him and told him to vote for you. Huh? So, well, that's what he done. Voted for both of you. And here's how it come out. One vote for Abner Peabody, two votes for Cedric Weehunt. For Cedric? Yes, Mom. <laughs> I never thought I'd grow up to be a president of a gold mine. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I dog is Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Hello? 
Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Squire Skimp reported that he had secured an attorney, a Mr. B.W. Blair, to handle the old fellow's suit to win back the gold mine, which should have been inherited by the baby. Lum and Abner were unable to pay an initial fee of $500 demanded by the attorney, so the squire generously offered to pay the fee for them. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jottem down store and library, checking their cash on hand. Listen. The five and a nickel makes 90 and one, two, three pennies. That's uh, $24.93. Is that the total amount we got in the cash drawer? Yeah, and that's a long ways from $500, too. Yeah, well, maybe we could talk that lawyer feller, Lom. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh... Mr. Blair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squire calls him B.W. Yeah, well, maybe we could talk Mr. Blair into taking this case for less money and tell him, man, that he can get something out of the gold mine after he gets it back for the baby. Well, we can't do that because Squire's already sent him the money. No. Uh-huh. Besides, I don't think he'd take the case for any less, no way. He wouldn't, huh? He claims it's going to be an awful hard fight. Well, how soon do we have to pay Squire back? He said for us to just take our time, but I want to get it paid back quick as we can. Oh, yeah. It's awful thought of you, Squire, to put up that much money for a lawyer, but still, I don't like to be under obligations to him. Oh, no, me neither, no. So, we got to study up some way to raise some money in a hurry. Yeah, let's see. Might have a fire sale here at the store. Or a January clearance sale. Well, this ain't January, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wouldn't be legal, would it? Well, besides, I don't think we could raise enough money that way, Abner. We've got to figure out some quicker way. Well, I don't know what to suggest, Long. Might ask Cedric, see if he's got any ideas. Cedric? Yeah, he ought to be helping us figure this out as long as he's president of the gold mine. Now. Cedric ain't president of the gold mine. How many times do I have to tell you that? Well, he was elected, wasn't he? No, he wasn't elected, wasn't he? Lom, I counted them votes myself. I got one and he got two votes and that makes him president. No, you don't know such a thing. That election was all a mistake and it don't count no way. Well, Cedric thinks he's president. I can't help what he thinks. We'll hold another election sometime when I can be there and watch and see that everything's done according to the rules. But right now, we've got to concentrate on raising this money. Yeah. Well, we might mortgage a store. No, that's one thing I ain't going to do. We've come so close to losing it that way a thousand or a hundred times, and I don't want to take that chance again. Well, I don't want to lose a store, neither. Seems like there ought to be something we can sell. Sell? Wait a minute. I believe I just gave myself a hidey there. Huh? What about that old D-lever truck of ours? D-lever truck? Yeah, the one we bought when we was in the bakery business here. Oh, that thing, yeah. Well, what'd we ever do with that? Well, I reckon it's still over at that mechanic's place. You know, that new fella opened up that repair shop back of Frank Forster's filling station. Oh, yeah, is it still over there? Yeah, I reckon so. There was something wrong with it. Needed new spark plugs or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, some little thing. He wanted too much, though, so we never had him fix it. Well, call him up and tell him we want him to fix it now because we're going to sell the truck. Well, I don't even know his name. Well, just call Frank Foster and tell Wait a minute, I'll do it myself. Yeah, yeah, you better, Lom. You're better at stuff like that than I am. You're the executive type, you said. Do you think so, sure now? Well, you said you was yesterday, and I figured, yeah, you ought to look after sick as that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to get something done, do it yourself. I've always said oh, that. I'll call him up. Hello? Is that you, Frank? This is Lum Edwards. Oh, oh tolerably well. How's yourself? Uh-huh. Break his back. Say, Frank, what's the name of that mechanic right back at your place there? The new fella. Douglas, Douglas, that's right. I wonder if you'd call him over to your phone. Yeah, if you will, please. I'll, I'll hold it. Is he going to get him on? Yeah, the fella's name's Douglas. Well? Start thinking of somebody we can sell the truck to now. Well, let's see. Who'd want to buy an old truck like that? I know one thing, they won't have to take our name off of it because our name's already done that. <laughs> it is, huh? Yeah. Boy stuff? Yeah, I was by there a whole month or two ago. I reckon, oh, that truck's been sitting outside there, you know, in the weather, and all the paint's come off of it. I didn't hardly know it when I seen him. <laughs> yeah, we ought to put it in the shed somewhere. Yeah, or to have a record. Still a good truck for somebody. Hello? Hello, Mr. Douglas? Uh, this is Lum Edwards talking. Well, I, I'm one of the fellers that owns that truck you got over there. Yeah, that's the one. Why, uh, we'd like for you to go ahead and fix it up now, because we want to sell it. Want to, yeah. Huh? It was. Well, I do know. 
What is it, Randy's we're in luck, Abner. He says some fella is just in there this morning wanting to buy it. Wanting to buy it? Uh, who was the fella, Mr. Douglas? Oh, you don't. Well, if he comes back, try to make a deal with him. Oh, I don't know. Get as much as you can for it. Yeah, $50 anyway. Commission. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, we'd be glad to pay you for selling it. Why, sure. All right, Mr. Douglas. Much obliged. Goodbye. Didn't he know who it was that was wanting to buy it, Mom? No, he don't seem to know hardly anybody around town here. I believe he'd do a lot more business if he'd take the trouble to get out here and get himself acquainted with folks. Yeah, well, he struck me as being an awful grouchy fella that time I took the truck over there. I went in to talk to him just to... Oh, well, howdy, Mousy. Yeah, come on in, Mousy. What can we do for you today? Well, sir, I guess I'm going to want quite a few things, Lum. I've got a list here someplace I made out. Oh, did your woman Gussie send you over for groceries? No, sir, this is all for myself. Oh, here's a list right here, Lum. I'll read it off to you. I see a side of bacon and two dozen cans of beans and three work shirts and one lantern, one shovel. You have any shovels here, Lum? For goodness sakes, Mousy, what do you want with all that stuff? Oh, they just supplies and equipment for my new job. You got a new job, Mousy? Yes, sir. I start in just a few days now, Abner. I'm sure looking forward to it, too. I know I'm going to love the rugged life of a gold miner. Gold miner? Yes, sir. Cedric has given me a job in his new gold mine. You know, he's just like a mother to me. Well, just a minute here, Mousy. I hate to disappoint you, but Cedric ain't got no gold mine. He hasn't? Well, you, you mean I haven't got a job after all? I'm feared that's the case. Cedric ought to be ashamed of himself going around hiring people to work for something he ain't even got. Well, he said that he was elected president of some gold mine, Lum. Well, yeah, that was a mistake. Cedric got that all mixed up. No, he never now, Lum. We taken a legal vote, and he got two votes, and I got one, so that makes I him... I know what happened. Don't go into all that. Answer uh, the phone. Yeah. I think that was our ring, wasn't it? I don't know. I'll see, though. Hello, jot him down store and library, Abner Peabody doing the talking. Huh? Oh, yes, Mr. Douglas. Douglas? Oh, here, here, I better take it, Abner. Oh, yeah, here, just a minute, hold the phone. Here, Lon. Yeah. Uh, hello, Mr. Douglas. Did that fella come back? Well, good, already, huh? <laughs> well, I do know. He sold it and got a check for it already, Abner. How much did he get for it? Uh, how much did you sell it for? Five hundred and fifty. Oh, Granny's, I didn't think it was worth that much. <laughs> <laughs> who did you sell it to? Who was it, Lom? Ah, uh, he's looking to see who signed the check. Oh, good for him. Huh? <laughs> oh well, I reckon they can afford to pay that price then. Who was it, Lom? Uh, some big company. Oh, oh, good for. Well, them. Mr. Douglas, I'll send somebody over to pick up the check right away. Wonderful work. Huh? Oh, yeah, the commission. Well, you can have the $50, because all we want is 500 anyway. For the land's sake. Yeah, all right, Mr. Douglas. Don't mention it. Much obliged to you. Goodbye. Doggy, $500. That was quick work, you know. It? Yeah, now we can pay Squire off. Yeah. We'll write him a check for the full amount right now. Where's that pen? Uh -huh. Gee, are you fellas sure that Cedric hasn't got a gold mine? No, Mousy. See, it actually belongs to the baby, and Lom claims that Cedric ain't even president of it. Well, I've lost a lot of jobs, but this is the first time I ever lost one before I even started on it. Uh, here, Mousy. I'll give you a little job to do. Oh, yes, sir. I'll, uh, get you to deliver this check to Squire Skimp, if you will. Why, sure. I'll be glad to do it, Lom. Uh, tell him not to cash it till tomorrow, though, because I... Uh... Won't get a chance to go to the county seat and put the money in the bank till then. Yes, sir, I'll tell him. And wait a minute. Uh, take this money in the cash drawer over to the mechanic, Mr. Douglas. You got a new fellow over there back of Frank Foster's oh, phone station? yes, sir, I've seen him. Well, well, tell him there's only $24.93 here, but I'll give him the rest when I come back from the bank. Give him the rest later, yes, yeah. sir. And he'll have a check there for you to pick up and bring back here. Yes, sir. Well, I'll get back just as quick as I can, Lon. Yeah, all right. See you later, Mousy. Yes, sir. Hey, Granny Zabner, it feels good to get that debt paid off to Squire. Yeah, I don't believe you ought to have paid Mr. Douglas all that money for a commission, old Lom. Ten or fifteen dollars would have been enough. No, I think he deserves more. 
getting as high a price for it as he did. He's a good swapper. Yeah, he is. We got more than it's worth. Oh, we ain't my. out nothing. No. And he's happy, and we got our obligation paid. <laughs> yeah, I reckon that's right. Give it to him. I don't care. <laughs> I don't think we could have come off no better than that, no. Why, well, no. Don't reckon we could. What, was Mr. Douglas going to take a repair bill out of his commission, or, or do we have to pay that on the side? Wonderful world. Oh, howdy, Cedric. Oh, there you are, Cedric. Come on back here. I want to have a little talk with you, young man. Yes, ma'am. I want to have a talk with you fellas, too. Being president of a gold mine sure keeps a feller busy, I'll say that. It does. <laughs> well, that's the first thing I want to talk to you about. Well, don't worry. Everything's going along just fine, Mr. Lum. Got a lot of stuff already. And a hard, mousy gray to work first. Not yeah, we know all. that, Cedric. The fact is, I got a check for him here for his first week's salary already. A check? Well, you can't write checks, Cedric. You ain't got no checking account. Oh, well, I don't sign my name on them. Huh? I sign We Hunt Peabody and Edwards Gold Mine Company on them. Oh! <laughs> of course, I can't get all that on that little bitty line there, so I just make it to WPEGM Company. That stands for We Hunt Peabody, Edwards, and Go- Gold Mining Company. Oh, well. The WPEGM Company. Oh, my goodness. What's the matter, Long? That's the company that just bought our truck. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I right, dog is Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Well, Lum and Abner have failed so far in their efforts to raise the $500 which Squire Skimp paid out of his own pocket to hire a lawyer to fight the baby's gold mine case. They sold their old delivery truck, only to discover that the purchaser was Cedric, acting as president of the gold mine. Before they discovered this, however, Lum gave Squire a check for the 500 they owe him and paid part of the commission demanded by Mr. Douglas, the mechanic who negotiated the sale of the truck for them. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot them down store and library. Lum is talking on the telephone. Well, I can't help it, Mr. Douglas. We ain't going to pay you no more commission. But don't you understand? That fellow you sold our truck to was Cedric Weehunt, and he was just buying it for us. Well, he never knowed it was our truck, though. Well, that company name he put on that check don't mean nothing. No, he just made that name up. That stands for the Weehunt Peabody and Edwards Gold Mine Company. But there ain't no such a company. No, we ain't trying to put nothing over on nobody. Well, go ahead and lawsuit. See if we care. Well, just go ahead. All right. Goodbye. Mr. Douglas wants a whole $50 commission, huh? Yeah, granted, we already paid him $24 of it. Why, sure. That's enough commission for just selling our truck back to us. Yeah, well, do you actually think he can lawsuit us for the rest of it long? I don't know. I suppose he will. Huh. I don't know what Cedric ever figured we'd want that truck for in the first place. Well, he said he bought it so that we'd have something to haul the gold out of the mine in. Now, that shows right there how much he knows about gold mining. How? Huh? He can't get a truck down in a mine, I don't think. Can't, huh? Well, we got to get that idea out of his head that he's president of the gold mine before he gets us into some real trouble. Well, it ain't going to be easy to do, Lum. He sits down there at Moe's Moots' barber shop telling everybody he's a big executive now. He had his shoes shine five times yesterday. For goodness sake. That little pearl here that Clarabelle Seastrunk's quit going with Gomer Bates over and wants to get Cedric back now that he's a gold mine president. <laughs> she don't know what a mistake she's making. But I ain't going to worry about Cedric no more. We got enough worries of our own. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the biggest one study enough a way to raise that $500 we old Squire. Well, didn't you pay Squire with that check yesterday? Yeah, but that check ain't no good. Huh? I wrote that check when I thought we'd actually sold a truck. Oh, and that's I was going to right. take the truck money to the bank today to give her the check or give to Squire. Well, here, are we going to get put in a penitentiary for writing a bad check, Lon? No, I explained the whole thing to Squire, and he said he'd hold the check till we got that much money in the bank. Oh, he's sure been awful nice lately, ain't he? Yes, sir. I believe Squire's turned over a new leaf and reformed himself, Abner. I hope so. I sort of feel bad for all them mean things I've said about him in the past, too. 
Yeah, of course, old llama. I still think he's just anxious to see the baby get the gold mine back so he can sell him a big insurance policy. Well, that's more than likely got a little to do with it, yeah, but we can't blame Squire. That's his business, insurance and real estate. Yeah, but I believe he figures he can get part of that gold mine, too, get to be treasury of it or something like that. Well, he deserves something out of this, all the trouble he's went to. Well, we better concentrate on how to raise some money. Yeah. I reckon we could try to sell the truck again, but... I um, feared Cedric would just buy it again, thinking it was a different drug. Yeah, just about. Wait a minute, I believe that was our ring. Huh? Maybe that's Squire now. Yeah, but more likely that's him. I'll get it on the tender. Hello, John, I'm down the store library, having a Peabody doing a talking. Who? Oh, no, Cedric ain't here right now. Who's this talking? Oh, hey, well, I'll have him call you, Clarabelle, if he comes in. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Fair Bell, she's trying to yeah, appears like she's sure enough trying to get Cedric back again. <laughs> Don't guess that ought to make Cedric happy the way he's been pining ever since Gomer Bates started going steady with her. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll take his mind off of being president of the gold mine. Well, I can't hardly wait to give him the good news. Bound you, he'll run right over to Claire Bell's house, a big box of candy in his hand, you know. That's <laughs> our ring again, Abner. That must be square this time. Oh, must be. I'll get them right here. Hello, got them down store, having a Peabody. Huh? This is who's secretaries? Cedric? Why, he ain't got... Huh? Board of directors meeting? Well, now, just a minute here. We ain't got time... Uh, hello? 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 Hmm. Hung up, I reckon. For goodness sake, who was that? Why, it sounded like one of them little Abernathy boys. Clarence, I believe it was. He claims he's Cedric's secretary. Secretary? That's what he said. And he's that out kept anything he's done yet. <laughs> Hiring a secretary. And he <laughs> says we're supposed to come to a board of directors meeting tonight long. Where? Yeah. What are we supposed to do that for? He never said. Just said them was President Weehunt's orders. I'm sworn to goodness. He ain't the exasperatingest one human being I ever heard. I don't know who he is. <laughs> oh, Wait a minute, there comes the squire. Uh, oh, oh. Well, howdy, y'all. How are you, Edna? Yeah, howdy, squire. Fine, squire. Come on back. Yeah, we sort of been expecting to hear from you this morning, squire. Yes, well, I've got some good news for you, too, Rump. Oh, uh, B.W. Sure. sent me his first report today. Who did? Uh, B.W., that's your attorney, Mr. Blair. Oh, yeah. Sir, uh, but now before I go into that, Lum, there's another little matter I'd like to mention. I don't know how it happened, but that $500 check that you gave me got mixed up with my other checks and was sent through to the bank. Oh, my goodness. Well, now, don't worry, Lum. I called the bank long distance and told them it was a mistake and instructed them to just charge that off to my account there, so it's all right. Well, are you sure that'll keep us from getting arrested? Oh, yes, there's nothing to worry about, nothing to worry about. Now, here's what B.W.'s done so far, Yeah, I want to hear that. Well, he's contacted Mrs. Logan's lawyers, and uh, uh, by the way, Mrs. Logan is a baby's aunt, you know. They wanted to establish a claim for the gold mine. Oh, well, we never did know her name. She, She never told us that. When she come in the store and left the baby. No, no, I don't imagine she would have told you, Lum. Uh, anyway, Mrs. Logan's lawyer told B.W. that the mine has been closed for the last couple of months now because, uh, well, it sort of played out. There's no more gold there. No more gold? No, that's their story. But B.W. said that he doubted this very much. And he thinks it's just an attempt to prevent anyone else from being interested in the mine. Sounds reasonable, too. Yeah. Now, he said that he was almost certain this was the case because they refused him permission to send an engineer into the mine and examine it. Uh, Granny, is that practical proves it right there? Yes, don't? it does. It does to me, Lum. So, now, here's what B.W. proposes. He wants to sneak a couple of experts into that mine and have them make some extensive tests. To determine just how valuable mine is. Yeah. Uh, he said that he can hire a couple of men for this job for about $300 apiece. $300 apiece? Huh? Yes. Uh, well, you see, Lum, the men are taking quite a risk. They're actually trespassing and they're liable to get caught. But it's the only thing to do because if they find out that uh, Mrs. Logan's lawyers were telling the truth and the uh, mine is worthless, why, well, there's no sense to spend any more money to fight the case. No, I reckon not. And on the other hand, if it proves to be very valuable, why, it'll be well worth the fight, and you'll have a nice piece of evidence against Miss Logan. This will prove that she wasn't telling the truth. Yeah, you're right, Squire. Oh, yes, Tom. Yeah, and we want to see the baby get everything that's coming. Why, yes. 
but uh, three hundred dollars a fee. Well, well, now well, I know your financial status, Long, but now why don't you go into the bank tomorrow and negotiate a little loan? Your credit's good there, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, credit's good there. Well, why don't you do that? And in the meantime, I'll forward the money out of my own account so that B.W. can go ahead and get the men started right away. Well, I hate to have you do that, Squire. <laughs> no trouble at all, um. Well, you can pay me back tomorrow when you get your loan or any time as far as that's concerned. Well, I've got to be running along. I've been neglecting my own business here lately helping you fellas. <laughs> well, I'll see you tomorrow, and that's so long. Yes, yeah, so long, Squire. Much obliged for coming over. Oh, that is all, that is all. Thing starting to run into money, Evan. Yeah. If it was for anybody else besides the baby, I wouldn't do it, neither. No. Of course, I'll be we're doing the right thing, old lump. Finding out whether the mine's got any more gold in it or not. For if it ain't got no gold, ain't no use to hire a lawyer and all that kind of Wonderful oh. world. Oh, howdy, Cedric. Say, Cedric, uh, Clarabelle wants you to call her. You fellas get my message about the board of directors meeting I'm holding to... Huh? huh? Clarabelle wants me. Yeah, yeah, she called up here just a little while ago. <laughs> I think she wants to make up with you, Cedric. Make up with you? Hold on, me, don't. You mean she ain't going with Gomer Bates no more? I don't much believe she is, Cedric. <laughs> I've been waiting for this day for a long time. Yeah, Boy. I figured you had. Say, say, would you fellas mind if I use your telephone? Why, no, go right ahead, Cedric. Proud to have you use it. <laughs> I reckon this will sort of postpone that director's meeting tonight, won't it, Cedric? Yes, Mom. I reckon so. You fellas won't mind, will you? Oh, of course not, Cedric. I'm proud to see you and Clarabelle make up. Yes, sir. You know that Gomer's been with Clarabelle every single evening for I don't know how long. I know it. I've just been waiting for this chance. <laughs> oh, hello? Hello, is that you, Gomer? Gomer? Well, listen, Gomer, is, is it so you ain't going with Clarabelle no more? Not careful what you say now, Cedric. Don't get mad. You ain't, huh? Well, if you ain't going over there, well, then how about me and you going fishing tonight? Yeah. All right, Gomer. Hey, Granny, Zedner, I believe that's our ring. I dog is Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner are in debt to Squire Skimp for an additional $600. Mr. Blair, their lawyer on the baby's gold mine case, informed them that he needed to hire two mining experts to sneak into the mine and make some tests to determine if it really is worthless, as Mrs. Logan's lawyer claims. The squire advanced the money for this, but Lum went to the county seat bank today to borrow enough money to repay squire. As we look in on the little community today, we find that Lum has just returned from his trip to the bank. Uh, they they wouldn't make you no loan, huh? No, no, I don't understand it. Huh. That's the first time I've ever been turned down to that bank. Well, what reason did they give for not letting you have the money, Long? Well, they claimed I was getting myself a bad reputation. Bad reputation? Yeah, they said I had just wrote some, uh, some checks to Squire Skimp that weren't no good. Oh. And said if it hadn't have been for Squire, I'd have got myself in a lot of trouble over it. Well, I thought Squire said he called up the bank and told him not to let that check of yours go through. Yeah, that's what I thought, too, but more than likely he never called him up in time. Yeah, I'll bound you he never called him up at all, if you want my old Oh, no, he called him up all right, because he fixed it some way. He did. But not quick enough to keep me from getting a bad reputation. Huh. And another thing, they said I didn't pay my bills. Claimed I owed that Mr. Douglas over here some money for selling that truck Cedric bought. For the land sake. Now, I reckon how they knowed about that. I don't know, but they found out some way. Hmm. Them bank fellas knows everything. I hate and despise them. Well, here, what are we going to do now, Lum? Squire was expecting us to pay him back that money today, wasn't he? Yeah, I told him I'd sure enough have the money today. The fact is, I was figuring on borrowing enough from the bank to pay back both the $500 he paid out for a lawyer and uh, $600 for them experts. Experts? You know, them fellas that was going to sneak into the mine at night and make some tests to see if there was any more gold there. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I still don't see, though, why we ought to have to pay them $600 just for doing that. Well, Mr. Blair, the attorney, claims they wouldn't do it for less, on account of it being so risky. 
risky. Yeah, you see, if Miss Logan catches them in her mine, or what she claims is her mine, well, she can have them arrested and thrown in the penitentiary. Oh, well, I'd hate to see that happen to yeah. them. I hope they don't discover that that mine ain't got no more gold in it. Because uh, then me and you have just spent $1,100 for nothing. Yeah. We ain't spent that much, actual, but we owe it to Squire. Well, now, if we get the mine away from Ms. Logan and give it back to little Charlie, will we get any of that $1,100 back, Lone? Oh, yeah, natural. The baby's estate will pay us back. He will, huh? Yeah, more than likely they'll want to pay us extra for doing such good work. Yeah. We won't take it. Won't take it? No. All we're interested in doing is getting the baby everything that's coming to him. Oh, yeah, sure. We ain't going to let nobody take nothing away from little Charlie, no, sir. I wish you'd quit calling him little Charlie. That ain't his name. Well, that's the one I like anyway. Well, little Lum, I like that better. I like Charlie better. Of course, now, after we get his mind running in good shape, we might look around the Black Hills and open up a little gold mine of our own. One of our own, huh? Yeah, get one right close to the baby's mine so as we could run both of them at the same time. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Dog is just get... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There comes Squire right oh, now. I hate to tell him we can't pay him that money. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen. Well, howdy, Squire. Well, I just stopped in on my way over the post office, Lum. I'm sort of expecting to hear from B.W. this afternoon. Yeah. Yes, you see, I wired him at uh, $600 yesterday, and then last night uh, he wired back to tell me that uh, he'd hired the two mining experts and that they're going right to work. Well, that's good. They went in the mine last night, huh? Yes, yes, I guess so, Lum. Granny, I hope they find a lot of gold. <laughs> yes, me too. Well, I figured if they were able to make any tests, by B.W. will send me the results. So I guess I better get on over there and see if there's any word to come in yet. Well, uh, just a minute, Squire. There's something I ought to tell you. Yeah, what's that, Lum? Well, I'm feared I can't pay you back that money right away. Oh, tut, tut, Lum. I went into the county seat today to get a loan at the bank, and they turned me down. Turned you down? Yeah, yeah, flat. <laughs> said it was on account of that check of mine you sent to the bank by mistake. Why, the scoundrels. Why, they can't do that. I told them that was an accident. Explain the whole thing to them, Lum. Well, they said you fixed it up some way for us, but they still wouldn't give me no loan. Mm, by Jove, I never heard of anything like that before. I have a good notion to discontinue doing my banking there. The uh, scoundrel. Well, anyways, that's the reason we can't pay you now. <laughs> well, now, don't you let that worry you for a minute, Lum. Well, that's nice of you to say that, Squire, but we don't feel right about it. I can't help but worry some. Well, now, i tell you what you can do, Lum. Uh, just to ease your conscience and make you feel better about it, I'll let you sign a note for the full amount if you'd like to. Yeah, will you do that, Squire? Why, yes, yes. Danny, that'll do it. Well, personally, I'd rather just take your word, Lum, but now if you want to sign a note, why, that's a thing to do if it'll make you feel any better. Let's see, I should have a promissory note blank in my papers here somewhere. See, there's an insurance policy, a rate book, property deed. Subdivision man. Yeah. Letter from J.P. Morgan. Uh, yes, here we are. Yes, promissory note. Yes. Uh, just sign on the bottom there, Lum, and I'll fill out the rest there. Yeah, all right, Squire. Hand me that pen there, Evan. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it. Let's see now. This will be for $1,100, won't it? Yeah, that's right, Squire. Not that it matters much to me, but I just think we should keep the record straight as all. Well, there you are, Squire. All fine. Yes, all right, Lum. Now, don't you men worry about this at all. Just forget it until after you get the mine back. There'll be plenty of time to discuss it then. Yeah, well, much obliged, Squire. You don't know how much of a help you are to Oh, cut that, Lum. Think nothing of it. Well, I better get on over to the post office. If I hear anything, well, I'll be right back, man. Yeah, all right, Squire. Dog, is that a... Awful big note you sign there, ain't it, Lum? Yeah, it is, ain't it? It sure is, $1,100. But I don't know what else we could do. And I don't feel like we're under so much obligation to this squire this way. No, of course, we still got to pay him the money, though. Yeah, but, oh, wait a minute, there's your grandpap. Grandpa, well, I do know. Well, howdy, Grandpa. Howdy, 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 howdy. How are you today? Hey, you fellas hear about Cedric? About Cedric. Yeah, he's got himself a gold mine. All oh, that. Yes, sir. A genuine gold mine. Fourteen carats, he says. Huh. He's president of it. Funny you fellas ain't heard about it yet. It's all over town. Well, we knowed about it, Grandpap. It's all a mistake. Uh, all there's knowed, Cedric can make a success out of himself. All there's knowed it. 
Fair's end of a gold mine, it is, Abe. No. It is, Abe. Reminds me of Curtis McCook. You recollect Curtis, don't you, Abner? No, I don't believe I do. Oh, yeah, Cherry Hill boy. You recollect him, don't you, Lum? No, I don't believe I do, Grandpa. Had one awful big ear. Had awful big ear. His mama never, never let him go outdoors during a higher wind at all. Good stiff breeze would blow him around in circles. Oh, Grandpa, sassy for It would, it would. <laughs> Sir Curtis had a lot of get up and go to him, though. He wanted to make a success out of himself in the worst way, so he went to Gary, Indiana, and taken up miniature golf. Miniature golf? Yes, sir, taking it right up. And he got to be a champion of the whole state of Indiana. Well. So then he got big ideas in his head and moved to Chicago. And right there is where he made his mistake. What mistake? Why, them Chicago winds just blowed Curtis around like a top. Huh. He couldn't hit a golf ball to save his life. Lost every game he played. And three weeks later, he died of a broke heart. Died what? of a broke heart. What's that got to do with Cedric? Huh? I say, what's that got to do with Cedric? Cedric Wee Hunt, you mean? Yeah. Say, I just heard something about him. He's bought a gold mine. Oh, my. A genuine gold mine, 14 carats, he said. I always knowed Cedric could make a success out of himself, knowed it. Reminds me of a boy I used to know over Cherry Hill, Curtis McCook. I don't be glum, look there. That squire running across the street there. He must have heard something from them lawyers. Rainy, he must have. Yeah, yeah, sure do. Did I ever tell you fellas about Curtis? Had one great big ear. His mama never let him go out in the highway. Just high be wind. quiet, Grandpap. We ain't interested. We're busy Well, here. come on in, Squire. Did you hear something from Mr. Blair? Yes, yes, I did, Long. I got a telegram, and I'm afraid it's bad news, too. I'm afraid it is. Bad news? Huh? Yes, Long, uh-huh. I hate to tell you. Did them experts find out the mine weren't no good? Well, uh, no, uh... Well, as a matter of fact, Long, uh, he didn't know what they found out because they're in jail. They're in jail? Yes. Well, what kind of fellers did we hire anyway? Well, it seems that they were caught long in the mine, and uh, Miss Logan has had them arrested for trespassing. Oh. Yes, got them both locked up in jail, and their bail has been set at $5,000. $5,000? Yes. And B.W. advises that you bail them out as quick as possible, too. Advises that we bail them? Yes, wants you to do it right away, Lum. Well, Granny Squire, you know we ain't got that much money. Fact is, we're almost broke. You know that. Yes, I know it, Lum. I know it. But you'd better raise it somehow and do it quick. With those men in jail, you won't have a chance in the world to win this case, Lum. That's right, ain't it? Yes, it is. And furthermore, you'd better do it to save yourselves. Save ourselves? Why, yes. You see, uh, inasmuch as these men that uh, were hired by you to do this job, Lum, why, you're just as guilty as they are. Yeah. Why, yes, you are. And if you don't bail them out, why, they'll more likely start talking and tell that you hired them. And, well, first thing you know, you're liable to find yourself right in jail with them. Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I had no good lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner are in a pretty bad spot. First, they gave Squire Skimp a note for $1,100 to cover the cost of a lawyer and two mining experts who were hired to make some secret tests in the mine to determine its value. Word was later received that these mining experts were caught in the act, arrested and placed under $5,000 bail. According to Squire, it is the old fellow's legal and moral responsibility to raise the money and release the men from prison. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store. Grandpappy Spears is seated in the library section, reading aloud, as usual. Listen. Earn big money in your spare time. Sells 
No Snoro, the amazing little device that prevents snoring and ensures Grandpa, perfect rest. Grandpa, don't read out loud. You wake up little Charlie. Oh, is your baby here today? Yeah, he's back there in the feed room. Oh. Elizabeth had some shopping to do today and left him here for a while. Well, no Snoro sells itself. Luverne Marshall of Emporia, Kansas, made over $75 his first week as a snow roll salesman. Dan Pap, now stop reading them ads in that magazine. Well, I thought you fellas had to raise a lot of money right away. Well, we do, but we'll never get it that way. We've got to figure... Oh, well, howdy, Long. You back? Do you have any luck? No, nobody's got no money to lend. They haven't, huh? All the extra dollars are going into war bonds these days. Oh. And that's exactly where they ought to be going, too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I dog it, I don't know where we're ever going to get $5,000. Yeah, on. how about this? One? Get rich quick. Be your own boss. Learn to be a dancing instructor. Grandpa, quit reading that. A thing. short three weeks course will qualify you to teach all the latest steps. Foxtrot, two step. One Step, Charleston, yes, and many other. Grandpa. Yeah, you ain't helping us none with that prittle prattle, Grandpa. No. This is a serious matter. If we don't get some money awful quick, we're going to wind up in the penitentiary. Now, don't keep saying that, Lum. You scare me half to death. Well, maybe we'll ought to talk to Squire again, see if he's got any ideas on what we ought to do. Well, he's put himself out for us so much already, Abner. I hate to ask him to do anything else for us. Yeah. And it looks like there's just one thing left for us to do. I hate to say it, but it looks like we're going to have to uh, sell the store. Sell the store? I dog is. Well, ain't there no other way out? Yeah, how about this? And enter your baby in the big motion picture contest. Win $5,000 and a movie contract. Send a photo of your baby. Grandpa, please hash Wait a that minute. What was that, Grandpa? Enter your baby in what? Motion picture contest. Win $5,000 and a movie contract. Huh. Uh, Granny Sabner, maybe that's it. Huh? Does it say how you enter them there, Grandpa? Yeah, just send in a photo of the baby to this place in Hollywood. Hollywood? That's it. That's exactly what we're going to do. I know that baby of ours would win any contest, hands down. Oh, he's a cuter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little lum ain't got his beat when it comes to cuteness or smartness or anything else. No, no, sir. They ain't ever one young and that could stand up to little Charlie. But we ain't got no pictures of him to send in long. I know it, but we'll fix that. What's Ernie's number down at the drugstore? Oh, uh, uh, three longs and a short, I believe it is. What, what you gonna call him first? Three longs and a short. Yeah. We're gonna Kodak the baby. Kodak him? Well, <laughs> me, that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Better hurry, it says here the contest closes right soon. It does, huh? Well, don't worry, we ain't gonna waste no time. Hello, Ernie? This is Lum Edwards. Yeah, say, Ernie, uh, could you do us a special favor and develop some snapshot films for us today? Tell him we got to have them, Mom. Well, this is awfully important, Ernie. Yeah, well, good. Now then, I wonder if you'd send us a roll of film right quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and one more thing. Uh, would you mind lending us a Camry? Yeah, that's a good idea. You can't, huh? All right, we'll buy it then. Yeah, just charge it to us. Yeah, much obliged, Ernie. Goodbye. Well, Dogged, I better go back and get little Charlie and comb his hair and fix him up here in the well, well, wait till the camera gets here. No use waking him up ahead of time. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's Squire. Well, howdy, Long. Howdy. Hey, hey, hello, Grandpa. Hey, howdy, Squire. Come on in, Squire. Well, I'm a little worried, Long. I keep thinking about this situation that you're in. I just can't get it off my mind. Have you had any luck in raising the money? Well, no, not so far. Mm, I'm afraid of that. That's too bad. Well, Lum, I do have a bit of encouraging news from B.W. anyway. Encouraging, huh? Yes, it seems that uh, B.W. managed to have a brief chat with the two boys in jail, the uh, mining experts who were caught in the mine, you know. Oh, yeah, well, what did he find out from them? Well, the jail authority naturally wouldn't let him talk long, but the boys managed to say enough to indicate to B.W. that the mine contained some very rich deposits of gold ore. Well, good. Even more than they anticipated. Grannies, that is good news. <laughs> I thought you'd be glad to hear that. Well, now we know that any money that's spent in fighting this case is well worth it. Yeah, yeah. And in better. view of this fact, here's what I'm willing to do. Well, we got an eye of our own here, Squire. Hey, well, now, listen to my suggestion first, Abner. Of course, we all realize that those men must be bailed out because they're your most valuable witnesses. 
And in addition, if they remain in jail, why, they're liable to talk and incriminate you gentlemen. And, of course, you don't want that to happen. Mr. Rennie's no oh, no, you no. want to be in or whatever you said there, no. Now, we know it's impossible for you to get a loan anywhere, Lum, because, of, well, that unfortunate little incident concerning the bad check you wrote. Well, I never actually aimed to write no bad check. Uh, no, no, I know you didn't, Lum. It was a mistake. But, unfortunately, it has ruined your credit. Now, your other alternative is to raise a $5,000 bill by selling your store. I know you don't want to do that. No, that's the one thing we don't want to do. No. We keep from it. Well, I think we can prevent it, Lum. Now, here's my plan. With my credit and connections, I'm positive I can raise $5,000. However, I'll need something to put up as collateral. So I suggest that you put your store in my name and then in I... In your name? Well, yes, uh, well, just temporarily, of course, Lum, just till you get the gold mine, and then you can pay me both the $5,000 bail money and the $1,100 you've already signed a note for. Then I'll turn the store back to you. Mm. It's uh, really just a technicality to enable me to negotiate that larger loan. Well, I don't know, Squire. We have got another idea, like Abner said, and I believe we'll try that first. Yeah, yeah, we're going to try that first. It's a dandy. Well, it's perfectly all right with me, men. I hope this other plan of yours works. And I merely suggested mine out of pure friendship. However, if you're not successful, why, let me know and I'll be more than glad to go through with the other deal any time. Yeah, well, much obliged, Squire, and we'll let you know how it comes out. Yes, I do that, Lom. Good luck to you. I hope it all turns out fine. I'll see you again later. So long. So long, Squire. Put the store in his name. I didn't like the sound of that, Lom. Well, me neither, but we might have to do it. I hope not, though. Mom, you reckon Squire let that check of yours get to the bank on a purpose just so that... Wait a minute, wait a minute, I'll come see it right now. Wonderful world. Here's your Camry. Camry? How'd you get that, Cedric? Oh, I, I was over at the drugstore when, uh, whenever you fellas telephoned over. Oh, oh, Ernie told me to bring it up here for yeah, you. Well, good, good. Wh- who are you going to take a picture of? Little Charlie. Well, I better go back and get him ready. No, right? I'll get him, Abner. You and Cedric uh, get the film in the camera there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, Cedric. Let's get that thing fixed up. Well, it's already done. Huh? huh? Me and Ernie put it in there. Oh, oh. Can I take the pictures for you? I'm pretty good at Kodakin. I reckon so. Me and Lum ain't no hand at it. I know that. Uh, be sure and take good ones, old Cedric, because we're going to win $5,000 with these pictures. $5,000? Yeah, yeah. Some outfit in Hollywood's having a big baby contest, and they said that they'd give 5000 Or Wait a minute, wait a minute. There comes Lum and little Charlie. <laughs> yeah, hello there, little Charlie. Hello, hello there. Here, look this way. <laughs> oh, you got it curled. Oh, that's good. Hello, little Charlie. 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 Hello, little that's good. But, but what you going to set him on, then? Oh, I'll just hold him here. Hold him now. Just a minute, Lom. You ain't supposed to be in this picture. This is a baby contest. I know, but it'll be easier this way. Huh? Besides, the baby might get scared sitting by himself there. Uh-huh. Go ahead, Cedric, and take it. Just one. Hold it now. Yeah, Come look on. cute now. Look cute, Charlie. There it is. Yeah, better take a couple more so we'll be sure and have a good one. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Hold it now. Yeah, it's smaller. <laughs> Hello, buddy. <laughs> Wait a minute. You ain't going to be in all the pictures, Mom. Hurry up, Cedric. Get another in there. This one. Hold, hold the baby up higher. Oh, I can see you. Turn his face to the camera this way, Mom. Yeah, now, hold still. There you are. My dog is long. You're going to be in these pictures. Well, I ought to be in some of them, too. Did you get that last one where I was smiling there, Cedric? Yes, Mom. All right. Uh, take the film back to the drugstore and tell Ernie to develop him quick as he can. Well, ain't we going to take the rest of the film, Flom? No, we ain't got time. Uh, I know there's a good one in there we took anyway. Yeah, but you're in every one of them, Flom. We're just supposed to send a picture of the baby to them. Well, they'll see the baby all right. And then they might be looking for a leading man type, you can't tell. Huh? No use throwing away opportunity. Of all us that day. Aww. Hurry up, Cedric, and tell Ernie to pick out the best picture and send it to... Wait a minute. What's that address? Grand Pap? Oh, look, he's sound asleep. <laughs> well, where's that magazine he's reading? Huh? The one with the ad in it. Oh, right there, right there in his lap. I'll see what the address is here. Let me see it. Let me see it. Hey, it Abner, whenever they see these pictures, that $5,000 just <laughs> as good as ours. Oh, here it is. The Juvenile Casting Company, Hollywood, California. Hi, dogs, we better hurry up. It says the contest closes Saturday at midnight. Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter? 
Look at that magazine, Lom. Huh? June the 10th, 1921. Uh, Granny's Edmund, I believe that's our ring. I right, know his Lom, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lumen Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner have not been successful in securing the $5,000 necessary to bail out the two mining experts they hired to make tests in the gold mine to determine its value. This leaves the old fellows only two alternatives, either to raise the money by selling the store or by accepting Squire Skimp's offer. The Squire's plan is that he will raise the money if they will turn the store over to him as collateral. And, of course, he will turn it back to them after the baby's gold mine has been secured and all bills repaid. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library. Lum is just entering. Listen. Well, morning, Lom. Yeah, morning, Abner. Hey, what's that sign you got up out there in front? Big auction today. Oh, you seen that, huh? Well, how could I help it? I had to duck to keep from hitting my head on it. Yeah, well, that's as high as I could reach, Lom. I couldn't find the ladder. I reckon it is sort of low. Well, what's it for? That's what I want to know. Well, it's, uh... Well, just an idea that me and Cedric studied up this morning to raise some money. Raise some money? Why, yeah, you said we ought to do everything we could to get money so that we don't have to sell the store or turn it over to Squire. Yeah, but this auction sale idea ain't no good. Hey, now, you better go out and take down that sign. Well, it's too late now, Lum. Cedric's already out getting folks to come to the auction. For goodness sakes. Well, why don't you talk things over with me first before you go getting yourself tangled up and stuff like this? Well... I'm just trying to help what I was doing. I know you was, Abner, but after you get the folks here, what are you going to auction off? What have we got to sell? Why, we got lots of stuff around here. There's, uh, well, our stove back there. Our stove? You ain't going to sell it. Why, yeah, on them chairs and the table over in the library and that printing press at Dodge and these last year. And yeah. Grandpap said he could get quite a bit for some of them things. Grandpap said he could. Yeah, uh, he, he's coming over to be the auctioneer. He he says he's an old hand at running auction sales. Why, he never run an auction sale in his whole life, and he knows it. Well, he claims he has. Well, you can't believe nothing he tells you. Well, he done promise to do it. And he ought to be able to raise some money out of this lump. Every little bit helps you add me at that. Yeah, but it won't help enough in this case, Abner. We got to raise that $5,000 pretty fast. Yeah. Because I just seen Squire up the street, and he's had another hearing from that lawyer, Mr. Blair. Oh, he did, huh? Yeah, and Mr. Blair says we better hurry up for that money or it'll be too bad for us. Too bad? That's what he said. <laughs> says them two mining experts that they got in jail is getting awful unhappy, and they say if we don't bail them out pretty quick, why, they're going to get even with us. Get even? Oh, my goodness. And you know what that means? means they'll blab and tell everybody that we hired them to go into the mine, and, well, it just means a penitentiary for us, that's all. Well, Lom, I still don't see how they figure they can get us thrown in the penitentiary. We weren't the ones that was caught sneaking into that gold mine to make them tests. No, no, but we was the ones that hired the experts to do it. Yeah. So that makes us as guilty as them. According to Mr. Blair, he ought to know he's a lawyer. Yeah, but it, it was Mr. Blair's idea to hire them fellas, not ours. Yeah. Well, of course, we're hiring Mr. Blair, so it looks like they got us ever which way we look at it. Yeah, I reckon so. I still don't see through it, though. Appeared all peculiar to me, I'll say that. So what do you think we ought to do then, Lum? Just raise a $5,000 bill by selling a whole store? Well, I just hate to do that, Abner. Of course, we'll lose the store and then lose the case. Well, we wouldn't get the baby's mind back for him. We never would get paid back. No. And we wouldn't have no way of supporting the baby, neither. No, no, that's right. Well, I reckon then the best thing for us to do is just take Squire's offer. He said that he wouldn't actually be selling the store to him, that 
we'd keep on running it and it'd be in his name is all it would be, but we'd still have it. Yeah, I know. He said he'd just use it for collateral. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. That's what he said. Yeah, he'd raise all the money for us. He's aiming on making a bar at the bank, I think. Yeah, 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 that's what he said, and then going to put the store up, that's what he said. Yeah, of course, he turned the store back to us after we win the trial and all. But I don't know. I, I sort of hate to do that, too. Yeah, me too. I hate to see it go in Squire's name. I believe I'll go over and have a talk with Dick Huddleston. See if he knows any way to get hold of some money in a hurry. I know that that's a good idea. Yes, yeah, sir, Dick might know of something, Mom. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'll run over right now. And yeah. In the meantime, you just forget about this auction sale idea of yours. Huh? No use monkeying around with that. I'll see you later. Go ahead and answer the phone. Yeah, all right. I'll get it. Hello, John and Down Store and Library, Abner Peabody doing the talking. Mom? Oh, well, he ain't got your yet, Charity. No, Mom. Do what? Yeah, well, I'll tell him when he... Er, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I believe I see him coming up here now. Hey, do you want to talk to him? Oh, all right. Uh, what else? Yes, Mom. Oh, no, no, I won't forget it. All right, Charity. Goodbye. Well, howdy, 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 howdy. Howdy, Grandpa. What am I bid? What am I offered? Make well, me offer something. Grandpap, your woman, Charity, just called, and she wants you to bring home two bars of soap and a spool of white thread number 50, I believe she said. Oh, well, all right. Well, come on, let's get on with the auction. What am I bid? What am I bid? What do you offer? Um, Don't it seem awful good to get back in the old harness again? Oh, <laughs> well, uh, Grandpa, I hate to tell you, but uh, it sort of looks like there ain't going to be no auction. Ain't going to be no auction? No, Lom says we can't raise no money that way, or leastways not enough to do any good, he oh, said. sassy fresh. Sassy fresh. What does Lom know about auctions? Well, that's what he's saying. I'll raise you a couple of million dollars here. A couple of million? Yes, sir. I recollect one time I was running an auction sale down in Hatfield. Taking in so much money, I didn't have no place to put all of it. I had to start auctioning off the money so I'd have a place to stand even. Oh, I don't believe that, Grandpa. It's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> I can prove it. Well, come on. Oh, let's man. get the auction started. Well, do, do you think we ought to, so on? Well, of course we are too. That's what I come over here for. Well... Well, uh, let, let's try and get it over with then poor Lom comes back here. I know that I'd just love to take in a big pile of money and surprise him with it. <laughs> well, we'll surprise him, all right. Oh, he'll be tickled to death. All right, folks, what am I bid for? Uh, well, now, wait a minute, Grandpa. We ain't got nobody here to buy this stuff yet. Oh, that's right, ain't it? Oh, no. Well, where are they at? Well, I don't know. I figured by this time we'd have what a What kind of auction sale do you call this? No people. In all the years I've been auctioneering, I ain't never run one where they... Well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. gotta have Grandpa, there comes Cedric. He went out to get some folks. So he's got somebody with him right now. Er, no, no, that's Mousy Gray. That's who that is. Yeah, that's Mousy. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful world. Well, I've got one fella. One? Is that all you can yes, get, Cedric? <laughs> Everybody else said they're too busy. Too busy to come to the sale? Yes, Mother Mousy said he'd be glad to come in and bid and everything, didn't you, Mousy? Yes, sir. You know, I just love the gay spirited bidding of an auction. Well, come on, let's get started then. Boy, this is going to be well, fun. Isn't yeah, it? well, now, wait a minute. We got to have more than just you two fellas. We're trying to raise money here. Well,. We got money, ain't we, Mousy? Yes, sir, we got money. Well, shall I start in, Abner? Well, I reckon so. Might as well take in as much as we can. Every little bit helps, I reckon. Yeah, all right. Here we go. Uh, what's first, Abner? Huh? What What we going to sell first? The stove? Oh, I don't know. I reckon so. Yeah, yeah, sell the stove. Yeah, yeah here we are, folks. I generally always make a speech before I start selling stuff, but you all know what's here. Yeah. Look it over good. Yeah. Now, here's a dandy good stove. You've sat around it for the last three or four winters. I know you know it. It's good condition. What am I bid? Oh, ten cents. Eleven cents. Oh, uh, twelve cents. Well, I hear just a minute, you fellas. You've got to bid a lot higher than that. We won't never take in no money this way. Oh, supposed to bid a lot higher, huh? Why, sure. we got to raise money. Okay. Start over, Mr. Grandpa. Yeah, all right. Now, here we are, folks. A beautiful stove. What am I bid? Uh, Two hundred dollars. 
$50,000. Sold Abner Peabody for $50,000. To me, here now, wait a minute, Grandpap. I weren't bidding. Now, you said 50000 I heard you. Well, so did Cedric. And you're the only one I heard. Huh? He's got to learn to talk louder. All right, next article. Well, now, wait a minute now, Grandpap. I don't want to buy my own stove. Well, you oughtn't to bid on it then. Next article. Now, Grandpap, this is silly. Even if I did want to buy it from myself, I couldn't pay that for it. Fact said, I couldn't pay nothing. I ain't got no money. Well, make whatever arrangements you can with yourself. I ain't supposed to do the collecting. I'm just the auctioneer. Uh-huh. All right, next article. Yeah, this fine rocking chair, all wired together, sturdy as old. What am I offered? $2,000. $60,000. Oh, $79,000. Boy, this is fun. 99000 Sold to Cedric Lee Hunt for 99000 Now, just a minute here. This thing has went far enough. Cedric... How much money have you got? Mom? I say, how much money have you got? Oh, 35 cents. That's just about what I feel. Hey, take your rocking chair, Cedric. It's yours now. Yes, Mom. Now, what are we going to bid on next, Mr. Well, now, here, wait a minute, Cedric. You can't bid no more. you got to have a heap more money than 35 cents to bid at an auction sale. Well, i got more than that now. Huh? got 35 cents in cash and a $99,000 rocking chair. That ought to be worth something, Morton. Oh, dog, is that right, ain't it? Well, wait a minute, though. There's something wrong here. You come in here with just 35 Abner, cents. Abner. And, uh-oh, there's some back there. Abner, I just got some more bad news. From Dick Huddleston? No, he was out. Oh. Uh-huh. But I seen Squire again, and he just had another special deliver from Mr. Blair, and he sent the fella down here to get the baby. Get the baby? Yes, sir. They found some woman that used to work for the baby's mama, and so they want her to identify him and some other stuff. Well, will they bring him back? I don't know. And here's something else. They're giving us just till 10 o'clock tomorrow night to raise that bail money. If we ain't got it by then, that's the end of us. Oh, my goodness. Tomorrow night, huh? What time? Nine? Ten. Fifteen? One hundred. Two hundred? Six hundred. Sold to Cedric Lee Hunt for six hundred. Well, good for me. <laughs> what did I buy this time? I don't know, Cedric, but according to the prices I've been getting today, anything you get for $600 is a bargain. Well, that was a bargain. Now, Granny, I believe that's our ring. I had no Islam. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, today has been set as the deadline for Lum and Abner to raise the $5,000 necessary to bail out the mining experts who were caught attempting to make tests in the gold mine. This is also the day the baby is to be sent to the lawyer's office for purposes of establishing his identity as the heir to the mine. As we look in on the little community today, it's late evening, and we find Lum and Abner in the Jotham Down store and library. Baby's asleep in the feed room, and all of them are waiting for Squire Skimp. Listen. Is there some blankets in there and some of them cans of baby food? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Elizabeth packed everything for little Charlie. She put his toys in the satchel, too. Uh, There's some that little Pearl had when she was a young one. Granny, I hate to see the little rascal go away. Even if it is just for a short time. Yeah, me too, Lum. I don't see why we can't go along with him. After all, we're the ones that's paying for the trial. Or at least ways we're the ones that owe for it. Well, they ain't starting the trial yet. Squire said we'd be called when they actually take the case to court. Yeah. All they want to do now is get the baby identified. Get him what? Identified. Have some folks that used to work for his mama tell that he's actually self. Well, I know he's his self, Mom. I can tell that by just looking at him. For me, anybody could tell that. Yeah, but we got to prove that he was the son of Ms. Carteret. Because that's the thing that makes him the rightful heir to the gold mine. Yeah. You see, all the records of his birth and all has been destroyed. You reckon that mean Anna here, that Miss Logan, reckon she done that? Yeah, she more than likely had a hand in it. Well, say, Long, how about that locket we found around little Charlie's neck? Don't that coat of arms in there identify him? Well, that helps, but it don't actually prove it. Don't, huh? They got to have more proof than that. 
But Squire said that Mr. Blair is sure he can get enough witnesses now to prove it good. He did, huh? And if he can do that, why, well, he's bound to win the trial first. Mm, doggies, I hope so. I still don't see why we can't go along with little Charlie on this trip, though he'll get awful lonesome for us, Long. Well, the way Squire explained it to me, they got to be awful secret about this trip. Secret, huh? Oh, yeah. You see, they figure that Miss Logan's got fellas around here sort of keeping an eye on both me and you and the baby. Me and you? Well, what they watching us for? Well, they know that we're aiming on getting the baby's gold mine back for him, so <laughs> they'll do anything they can to keep us and the baby from ever getting to the trial. Oh, I do know. Them snakes ain't no weeds. So, Squire says if somebody else takes the baby, they won't suspicion it's him. Yeah. They'll think he's still here with me and you. Oh, yeah. Don't get that to be a good one on them, won't it? <laughs> well, that's why Squire's starting out tonight, so they won't see him. Uh-huh. He borrowed a car, and he's going to drive the baby as far as the county seat, and that's where these fellas that Mr. Blair sent out is going to take him. Oh. Private detectives, I believe he said they was. Yeah. I just hope none of them crooks that's working for Ms. Logan finds out that Squire's driving the baby that far. They'll get him away from Squire just as sure as a whirl on. Well, I don't think they'll find out. Dog, it, I'd just love to get my hands on one of them fellers. I'd take that baseball bat we got over there and whop him right smack on top of the head. Well, I don't reckon we'll have no chance to do that. Ever. I'll do it, Toa. I'll knock him right down. I do it. And if there's another feller, I'll do the same thing to him. I'll get every one of them. I'll pile them up in a the corner there till they reach the roof. Well, That's what I'll sake, do. Thanks, Abner. Came yourself down. So, guess what about to that baseball bat out? I want to have that thing handy. That's what I'll do. Control like. yourself, Abner. You ain't going to need that baseball bat. There ain't no fellers going to come in here. Besides, you couldn't pile them up in the corner, even if they did. I believe I could, Lum. Dog, as if he's going to take little Charlie away from us, I know I could. Oh, I know where that bat's at. It's back of the counter there. Yeah, Abner, don't go getting that thing out now. And don't keep calling the baby little Charlie. Well, we got to call him something, Lum. That's the best name I know of. That ain't his name, though. It's going to be Lum Edwards the second junior after I adopt him. Adopt him? You going to adopt him? Well, I'm sort of figuring on it. Well, here, though, Lum, now, you was going to do that once before, and Dick Cuddleston said you couldn't do it. Well, that was before we knowed he was showing up an orphan. Huh? Now that we know that, I can go ahead and do it. You can, huh? There's just one thing, though. I'm feared folks are going to say I'm just adopting him for his money. Oh, <laughs> he ain't got no money. No, but he's going to get a gold mine. Oh, yeah. I'd hate to have folks go around saying I'm one of them gold diggers. Well, now, what's wrong with being a digger? We got to get the gold out of that mine some way, Lom. I don't mean that. You got too many big ideas about yourself, Lom. You can't do that. You can do that digging just as well as the next feller. Facts is, I believe it do... I dog is, was that all right? Yeah, go ahead and answer it. Yeah, yeah. Wonder who that could be calling up. I'll find out. Hello? John, I'm down store in library. Abner Peabody doing the talking. Huh? Squire's there. Squire's over at my place, Lum. Elizabeth says he come by there to get the baby. Oh, well, he must have got mixed up, that's one. I, I thought he meant to pick up the baby over here at the store. Ask her what he wants us to do. Uh, well, uh, what does he want us to do, Elizabeth? Bring the baby home? Yeah, well, we'll wait right here then. Yeah, all right. Goodbye. <laughs> what did he say? Well, I, Squire said he'd be over here, Lum. Coming over here to get him, huh? Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, that'll be a lot better. Yeah, I believe it will, too. Yes, I sure do, Lum. Hi, doggies. I'm worried to death. That squire said he's bringing them papers over here for us to sign, too, didn't he? Oh, yeah, this is a deadline. Yeah. Mr. Blair said if we didn't get that $5,000 bill sent to him today to get them experts out of the jail, well, we'd be right in there with them. You know, Lum, I'd almost rather lose a store than do that. Well, I just keep hoping we ain't going to lose it to him. Keep hoping that we'll get it back from Squire after the trial's over. Yeah. But somehow I got a feeling that when we sign them papers tonight, we'll be just the same as saying goodbye to the jot them down store. Well, Squire promised we'd get it back. If we win the trial, we will. If we lose, we won't have no way of paying back all that money we borrowed from Squire so far. So natural, he'll just keep the store. Yeah, looks like he's got exactly where he wants us. Of course, he's been awful nice lately. Maybe... Wait a minute, who's that coming in the store there? Uh, good evening. I hope I'm not intruding. No, no. Come right in, sir. I saw your light, and I thought you might be able to give me some information. Information? Now, uh, don't tell him nothing wrong. Well, exactly what kind of information are you looking for, mister? Well, you see, I've come here to Pine Ridge to get my baby, but the house... You're a baby? Yes, yes. You know about him, don't you? He's the yeah, one that... Just a minute here. Who are you, anyway? Why, don't you know? I'm Mr. Finley. Did Mr. Blair send you down here? Mr. Blair? 
I don't know any Mr. Blair. That's all I wanted to know. Now, you fellas seem to be a little confused about me. I'm Mr. Finley. My wife and I have been in Australia. We have a vaudeville act, you know, Finley and Harris, and we've been entertaining in the camps there. You have, huh? Yes, and naturally we didn't want to take the baby with us, so we left him here. And now I've come to get him again. Surely there's nothing strange about that, is there? No, there ain't. Sounds reasonable, all right. The only trouble is, Mr. Finley, or whatever your name is, we can see right through your whole story. We know who sent you and what you're after. Now, get out of here before we throw you out. Well, now, wait just a minute. You're all mixed up about something. I'll leave here gladly if you'll just tell me where I can find Mr. Skimp. Skimp? Oh, so you knowed about the trip he was making, huh? Well, you ain't going to do nothing to interfere with that trip, because me and Abner will see to it that you... Abner? Abner, whereabouts are you? Don't worry, I'm right here behind him with the baseball. Hey, you can't... <laughs> Hey, Dogan, I got him, Long. <laughs> I mean, if you aren't to hit him so hard, Abner, you might have hurt him bad. I don't care. I want to get him just like I said I was going to do. Yes, sir. I'll get him every Ready, one. There comes Squire. Well, good evening, gentlemen. I guess we got our wires caught. Well, for the land's sake, what's been going on here, man? Abner got him just in time. Yeah, too. I sneaked up right behind him there when he was talking to Long and got him with a baseball bat. Oh, my goodness, this is bad. Uh, what did this man say to you? Oh, he gave us some big story about being in Australia, but we know right away he's one of them crooks working for Miss Logan. Uh, yes, yes, that's it, working for Miss Logan, undoubtedly. Uh, what else did he say? Oh, I don't know. He admitted he's looking for you, and then Abner got him just about then. No, this is bad. Bad? Why, he might have found you and taken the baby away from you. Uh, well, I mean, uh, you might have injured this man seriously, Lum, and if you have, it'll go awful hard with you men. It's us. Yes. And he's, he's a kidnapper, ain't he? Well, Ron, you have no proof of that. I better hustle this man out of town as fast as I can so nobody find out about this. Yeah, I reckon so. I never thought of that. Yeah, well, here. Here are those papers, Ron. Sign them right away and then get the baby for me. The baby? Yes, yes. Well, you handle the baby in this crook boat? Well, I'll manage somehow. Leave everything to me. I don't want two men to get in any more trouble. Oh. No, he's coming, too. Uh, we've got to get him out of here fast. Uh, grab his legs there, Lum. Hurry up. Yeah, yeah I'll get him. Uh, open my door for us, Abner. Haven't got a minute to lose. Yeah, I'll get him, Bar. Uh, there, that's, it, that's it. Come on, now. Easy. Hurry up now, Lum. Oh. All right. Yeah. Here, now, put him down right here. I can get him into the car by myself, all right. Now, here, you men rush back to the store and see if the baby's safe. Well, wait, are you taking the baby or ain't you? No, 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 not now. I don't think it's safe. Uh, just sit tight till you hear from me tomorrow, Lom. Well, what about this paper you want us to sign? Well, I'll get that the first thing in the morning. Uh, so long, men. Hurry back inside now. Yeah, so long, Squire. Come on, Abner. It's cold out here. Let's get back to the store. And Dogie Lom, it was curious. And old Squire changing his mind so quick. Yeah, it was. I hope tomorrow morning soon enough on them papers. Doggy, did you drop your watch there on the floor, Lum? Watch? Yeah, right there. No, I got mine. Maybe that fellow you hit on the head dropped it. Oh, must have. Hey, Doggy, that's a nice-looking watch, too, you know what? Look here. All gold, huh? Well, for the land sakes. Now, what's the matter? Mom, look here. Look on the back of it here. What is it? There's that same coat of arms that's in the baby's locket. <laughs> Granny's, Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know, Lum, I believe you're right. Now, see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, last night, Squire Skimp planned to meet Lum and Abner for a twofold purpose. One, to get the baby and send him to the lawyer, Mr. Blair. And two, to get the old fellows to sign the papers which would give Squire ownership of the store. While waiting for Squire, they had a visitor, a Mr. Finley, who said he was the baby's father and had come to get him. Well, they doubted this story and believed it to be a scheme of Mrs. Logan to get hold of the baby. Abner climaxed things by knocking the stranger out with a baseball bat. Well, when the squire arrived, he became very alarmed and hustled the stranger out of town to prevent Lum and Abner from getting into further trouble. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner and Grandpappy Spears in the library section of the Jotham Down store playing checkers. Listen. Yeah, go ahead, Abner. It's your move. I know it. I'm just studying here. 
So you caught this feller single-handed, huh? Oh, yeah, nothing to it. I just outwitted him, that's what I done. Just a little too smart for him. He was, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, he must have been awfully ignorant, I'll say that for him. Oh, no, he weren't ignorant. Facts is, he was awful smart. I was just a little smarter. <laughs> and stronger, too. Got him with my bare hands. Bare hands, huh? Oh, yeah. And a baseball bat. I never used the bat much, oh, just to, enough to knock him unconscientious about all. Oh, well, I could have did it with a baseball bat myself. That ain't nothing. Why, well, it is, oh, Donnie. Oh, that's it, Fred. Go ahead and move. Oh, yeah, let's see here. I had a good one all studied up here, and you interrupted Did me. you say the fella claimed the baby belonged to him? Well, that's what he claimed, but I could tell right away he weren't telling the truth. Special when he said his name was Finley. See, we already know the baby's papa's name was Guthrie. No that from some report that Squire got from a researching bureau. Uh huh. You'd think the feller to study up a better story in that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Special when he's dealing with somebody as smart as me. Well, what about this watch you said you found? The one with the same coat of arms that was in the baby's rocket? Don't that prove nothing? Well, no. Lom said that the feller more likely is just going to use that to make us think he was a baby's papa. He must have got it from Miss Logan, and she must have stole it somewhere. Oh, here, here, here. <laughs> Doggy, there's a move I was trying to think of right there. That's just where I want you to move. Just exactly where I want you uh, to oh, Wait a minute. No, it ain't you. <laughs> I didn't think so. Yeah, I'll make you pay for that. <laughs> Let me study here. Uh, what about the baby? Did Squire take him to the county seat last night? Oh, no. He's too busy getting that fella out of town. He said if I hurt him awful bad, why it'd get me and Lom in trouble. Oh, yeah. See? Well, did you sign the store order, Squire, like you said you was going to do? Well, not yet. Squire's coming over this morning to have us do that. Hurry up and move, Grandpa. Don't rush me. Don't rush me. I'm studying. You know, a curious thing about a Squire last night, he was all ready for us to sign them papers, and then this Finley feller kind of woke up and started talking, and right away Squire got excited and got him out of the store quick as he could. Forgot all about the papers and everything. <laughs> There's my move, Abner. Uh, try and get out of that. And... <laughs> no, I ain't worried about that. Hey, wait a minute here. Now, how did you get a man way down there? Did you cheat again? Of course I never you cheated. Did, and don't you accuse me of cheating, Abner Peabody. Wait, wait, I'll wait, take wait, a wait, baseball bat. Wait, wait, Grandpa. Mama here to make us stop playing. Mom? Yeah. Is he here? Yeah, he's back there in the feed room checking over the stock. Wants to see exactly what we got in the store when we turn it over to Squire. Well, just the same, Abner. You can't accuse me of cheating. All I don't right, want to hear it. All right, just be quiet. I won't. Still don't see how you move way down there next to my king horse out in the Wonderful end. world. Oh, well, how do you, Cedric? Come you on in. Have you got any junk? Junk? What kind of junk? Oh, every kind of junk. Huh? Ash cans and electric arms and copper kettles and bathtubs and gunny sacks and rubber and everything else. Government wants just about anything they can get. Oh, no, I don't believe we got any, Cedric. Uh, go ahead, Grandpa, move. All right, wait a minute. I guess it's my move, ain't it? Well, are you sure you ain't got no junk? This is importance, I believe. Don't bother us now, Cedric. We're busy. Yeah, go away, Cedric. I gathered up a bunch of junk out in the barn one day, but nobody ever come and got it, so I figured it ain't needed so bad. No, of course not. Just a minute, you fellers. I heard that. Huh? I heard what you and Grandpap were saying just now, and you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Ashamed of ourselves? Facts is, you ought to be arrested, because you two are sitting there acting like you wanted us to lose this war. Why, no, we don't want to lose a war. I know you don't. But we're going to if fellas don't change their altitude right quick. How? Huh? It's high time you and a lot of other folks waked up and started realizing just how serious this whole thing is. Grandpap, you said you'd got some junk together, but nobody come and got it. Yes, sir, and that's the truth, too. Well, just getting it together ain't going to do no good. you got to see that that junk gets to a junk man or to some collection agency or someplace like that. Call them up, or better still, take it there yourself. My right, grannies, it's your duty to do that. Yes, Mom, that's just what I was going to say myself, I think. Well, here, though, Lom, now, I hear the government don't actually need this scrap on and stuff. Somebody just doing this to make some money. Listen, Abner, them stories is something our enemy agency started. And every enemy? time you believe something like that, you're helping the enemy. Oh. There's an awful big shortage of raw materials right now, and don't let nobody tell you they ain't. Well, if they actually need the stuff... Actually, like... according to an article I read not long ago, our war plants is facing a big crisis right now. Here, huh? And the only way they can get enough materials to keep running is to salvage scrap iron and copper and lead and rags and everything else they need. 
So, Graham, perhaps you get out here and help Cedric collect everything you can. Me and Abner will round up everything we got around here. Yeah, yeah, that's what we'll do. Yes, sir. Come well, on. Now, Ron. wait a minute, Mom. I can't go now. We're right in the middle of a checker game. Grandpap, this ain't no time for playing checkers. Not when our soldiers, some of our own Pine Ridge boys, are in Europe and Australia and the Aleutian Islands and in the Solomon Islands giving their lives. Now, do as I say, Grandpap, or we're going to lose this war. And if we do, it won't be the fault of our soldiers and sailors and them boys from home. It'll be the fault of fellers like you. There's what? very little us folks back home here can do. But when they do call on us, we ought to be ready and glad to do our part. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth, Tom. Yeah, get up from our grand yes, Get I'm up and get started right, right now. now. Come on, Cedric. Let's get started. Yes, Mom, I'm ready. Oh, say, if any of you fellers saw Mr. Squire... Squire? What do you want him for, Cedric? Oh, I've seen a lot of old iron in his backyard and... I'd just like to get it, that's all. Oh, well, we'll see him for you. We'll tell him to get it, Cedric. Much obliged. Yeah. Say, who's that fella staying over at Mr. Squire's house now? Staying over there? Yes, Mom. He's out of town car locked up in the barn, and I seen a fella in the back bedroom. He had an ice bag or something on his head. On his head? Wait a minute. Uh, did this fella have black hair and a little mustache, Cedric? Oh, yes, Mom, I believe he did. I dog is on that must be. Yeah, there. I know, I know. Well, Cedric, you and Grandpap run along now and get all that scrap stuff you can. Yes, Mom, we sure will. Come on, Mr. Grandpap. I'm coming. So long, Abner. Yes, yeah, so long, Grandpap. We'll finish that game some other time. I dog is on that must be that Finley feller's over there. Yeah, it must be. I didn't want to discuss it in front of them, though. Well, reckon what he's doing at Squire's place. I thought Squire said he's going to get him out of town last night. Yeah, that's what he said, but. According to this, he must be some friend of Squire's. I do his mom reckon Squire's in with Ms. Logan and them other crooks. Well, I'd hate to accuse him of that, but I don't know what else to think. Me neither. Here's what he might be figuring on doing, Abner. Huh? First, he gets us to turn the store over to him, and then he goes in with Ms. Logan with the idea of fixing things so we'll lose the trial, and then we won't be able to pay Squire back, and he'll get to keep the store. That snake in the weeds. What ought we to do about it, Mom? I don't know. Maybe we ought to write a letter ourselves to that lawyer, Mr. Yeah. Blair, and ask him exactly how we stand wait a minute, if we wait. got a oh, chance. Oh, oh. There comes Squire right there. Oh, oh, well, don't tell him what we know. Oh, no, no. Let me handle it. Yeah, I will. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen. Yeah, howdy, Squire. <laughs> Have you men recovered from last night's excitement yet? <laughs> yeah, just about. <laughs> well, sir, I had quite a struggle with our young friend last night, but I finally managed to get him out of town. Oh, you got him out of town? Huh? Oh, yes, yes. I had quite a difficult time keeping him subdued, but my knowledge of jujitsu turned the trick. And at length, I was able to get him to the county seat, where I turned him over to the police. The police? Huh? Yeah, now, don't worry about that, Lum. See, I told them that you men caught him trying to break into the store, which gives you a legitimate reason for injuring him as you did. I wish I'd have hit him harder now. Yes, sir, Pam. Well, now, if that's out of the way, why, well, we can take up our other little matter there. Paper that you're supposed to sign on. And as soon as you do that, well, I'll pick up the baby and be on my way. Uh, where's the baby now? What's your place, Abner? Uh, just a second, Squire. I don't believe we'll sign these papers right now. What's that, Lum? Not going to sign them? Why, Lum, do you realize what you're saying? Yes, sir. If you don't turn the store over to me, I can't raise the money to bail those men out of jail and then... Yeah, we know all that, Squire, but we're going to take a chance. And another thing, we're going to keep the baby here, too. Keep the baby? Now, see here, Lum, you don't realize... No, sorry again, Squire. We've made up our minds, and that's all they are to it. Well, I'll just have to go back over the place and send BWR about this, see what he can do. But I'm afraid you're letting yourself in for an awful lot of grief, Lum. Maybe so. Well, I'll let you know as soon as I get an answer from him. Yeah, do that. Oh, uh, Just a minute, Squire, before you go. Abner, uh, hand him a bottle of that liniment there on the counter. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, yeah. Yes, here, yeah. Yeah, here you are, Squire. Well, uh, here, uh, what's this for? Uh, take that home with you, Squire, and rub some of it on Mr. Finley's head. It'll make him feel a heap better, I think. <laughs>